it's that time of year where you might be noticing some ghosts, ghouls and various kinds of terrifying creatures wandering around the street. It's Halloween. That or it might be time to move. Either way, seeing this might prompt you to start to think, why is it that we celebrate Halloween the way that we do? Behind the masks and the sweets or candy lies an ancient story. It's a tale of spirits, ritual, and a human need to confront the unknown. I'm Karel, I'm an anthropologist, and some of the main areas that I've done research in are on death and memory and food cultures. So it sort of seems like Halloween might be right up my alley. It's got some of my favorite cultural traditions all rolled up into one big bundle from history, food, and even death. More importantly, it's also my nephew's birthday. So happy birthday, Connor. In this video, we're gonna go over a few things ranging from Halloween's origins to Halloween's costumes, trick-or-treating, and even some of the modern fears in society. Halloween has ancient origins in a Celtic spiritual tradition called Sowen. Don't let the Gaelic spelling mess you up too much. Sowen was a festival of fire. It was usually celebrated on the eve of October 31st through to the 1st of November. It was really a transition from the light to the dark. It welcomed in the harvest and ushered in the dark half of the year. It's believed that celebrants of Solon thought that this was a time when the barrier between the physical world and the spiritual world was at its thinnest, allowing interactions between the human world and the other world. It's believed that participants thought failure to participate would bring about a harsh punishment from the gods, which could result in severe illness or even death. There's some records that suggest that it even involved six days of excessive alcohol consumption, mostly beer and mead, and feasting on various food. Not only that, but food would be left out as offerings to potentially wayward spirits to ward off any potential misfortune. And the fairies. You, you gotta leave food out for the fairies. With the barrier thin, it was thought that perhaps ancestors might cross over during this period, but also that the fairies might try to kidnap them. As a result, Celts would adopt costumes to look like either animals or monsters to try to ward them off. Some of the monsters might sound a little familiar. There was a headless woman with a wee black pig that would chase people through the fields. Shapeshifters which would accept offerings from the harvest. Decapitated men holding their own head riding on horseback on horses with fiery eyes. Their appearance a death omen to anyone who encountered them. And even monsters that would haunt, potentially kidnapping or entering houses and stealing your soul. In the Middle Ages, carved turnips even began to appear, embedded with coal and attached to string. The jack-o'-lantern, the turnip later being switched for pumpkins. There was also a tradition called dumb supper that emerged at that time. It was a kind of ancestral feast almost, if you will, where food would be eaten once the ancestors had been invited into the home and they would be tempted by cakes left out with the windows and doors left open. Kids would play games to entertain the dead. It would give celebrants an opportunity to interact with the spirits before they left after. As pagan communities began to increasingly become Christian, church leaders began to try to reframe Shoin as a Christian celebration. It was Pope Boniface in the 5th century that first attempted this. He actually moved the celebration to May 13th to celebrate saints and martyrs. However, the fire festivals of October, November that had been going on for thousands of years didn't end there. In the 9th century, Pope Gregory moved the festival back to that period and named the 1st of November All Saints Day, with the 2nd being All Souls Day. However, the pagan aspects of this celebration weren't altogether done away with still, and the 31st of October became known as All Hallows' Eve, or Halloween. With the 19th century Irish diaspora and mass immigration to the Americas, a lot of these traditions went with them. Even trick-or-treating is said to have derived from ancient Irish and Scottish practices in the nights leading up to Samhain. 
In Ireland, people practice a thing called mumming, where they would put on costumes and go door to door, singing songs for the dead and receiving cakes as payment. Even the Halloween pranks have a bit of an ancient tradition. Although traditionally, the tricks and pranks would be blamed on mischievous fairies. Had I known that as a kid, I probably would have used that one. Like with tricks, the masks and costumes was also potentially a way to cast off your social identity, to adopt that of another, a way to transform fear into play. The traditions have continued to evolve, still drawing on the past, with things like the 1980s revival through Wicca. Wicca celebrations draw on many aspects of traditional Zoan, including the celebration of fire and the honouring of nature and ancestors. There's also those that embrace their Celtic past, usually referred to as modern pagans or Celtic reconstructionists. Their celebrations involve the placing of juniper decorations around their home and creation of an altar to hold a feast in honour of the dead. As Halloween continues to evolve, so do the symbols. The ideas of zombies, witches and haunted homes are not just scary potentially, but they're a reflection of society's fear. So these do change. What do you think would be a truly terrifying costume for Halloween? Leave a comment. Obviously, the symbolism of corporate greed is everywhere throughout Halloween, but I think this year I'm expecting to see a lot of little Republican and Democratic presidential candidates. That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this little Halloween exploration, hit subscribe for some more, and maybe check out one of these ones that are gonna pop up shortly. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to brush your teeth.